How's it going everybody? I got another lens review for you guys today. This time we're going to take a look at the Rokinon 85mm 1.4. Uh, this lens is fairly comparable in size and has got a matching focal length on the 18-105. to So that's the lens that we're going to be comparing it to. Okay, real quick, this is the 18-105 to Sony G lens and this is kind of how it looks as far as size goes on the body and here is the 85 millimeter it's very comparable in size it only differs by about a half to three quarters of an inch in overall length uh, here is the Sony lens right there next to it and we'll pull both of these off and set them right next to each other another fun little fact is they both have got the same filter size, the same front element size there, so if you do have both of these, that's interchangeable. A couple quick things right off the bat. This is a full manual lens, so your focus as well as your aperture is going to be controlled up here. Um, on the back, it is not going to tell you what lens you've got connected, and it is not going to tell you any focal length or aperture information in any EXIF data, metadata, whatever you want to call it. One thing this lens does have is aesthetic appeal. It's got this massive front element here that has got a gigantic aperture. So it's just a really cool looking lens. All right, let's go take some pictures. Okay, this is going to be our first test. This here is set up at minimum focus. All right, take a look at the back of the screen here you can see that this leaf right here is what's in focus and that is right there is minimum focus so that gives you an idea of the distance there the minimum focus is just over three feet probably pushing four feet and uh, I'm going to show you the kind of framing that you get at this distance here. We're going to go into the camera now and shoot from... Uh, this is the kind of framing you can expect at minimum focus with this lens. I'm going to just run the focus out, let you guys see how it transitions. So now we're at the back of that little plant, and you can already see how well it separates the, the subjects from things on different focal planes. This thing has got a paper-thin depth of field. I'm going to go ahead and run the focus all the way out to the background. That's at infinity, but nothing's in focus. I'll run into that crate myrtle back there. <clears throat> then we'll run it back up. And there we are on the last branch. Now we'll run it all the way up to this first leaf. All right, I'm going to leave it on the last branch back here. I think that one looks better. And we're going to click it down to F2, F2.8, F, well, I guess that's it now, 2.8. That's F3.5, F4, 5.6, F8, F11, and that's all the way to 22. Let's run that back now. Now that's back at f1.4. I'm going to throw the 18-105 on there and we'll take a look at how it compares. Alright, this is at 18 millimeters. We're going to take this in to 85. That is right on 85. And now I'm going to change this to manual focus real quick. And we're going to run this back to minimum focus. The minimum focus is now about half the distance. Alright, that stick's now in focus. I'm going to cut to the other camera and show you where it is. Okay, here is the camera. Here is the stick that is now in focus. And there is the little yellow plant. So, at 85 millimeters, your minimum focus is tons closer with the F4. Alright, now I'm going to run the focus 
right now we're focused on the front leaf there. I'm going to run it back to the back one. Now uh, you can already see that there's not nearly the separation that there is on the other lens. This is F4. So now we're going to run that back all the way to the crepe myrtle. Give you guys an idea of how it compares. Run it back to the rear plant. Now all the way into the front one. Now I will go ahead and say that the electronic focusing on this one is garbage compared to the actual tactile on the Rokinon. <clears throat> this one is twitchy. If you slow down too much it seems as if the focus isn't even moving. And then it will kind of jump around on you depending on which way you're trying to get it to move. So I prefer the manual focus of the Rokinon. Okay this is how these images are going to work. I'm going to run the Rokinon at f4 to match the 18 to 105 here. We're leaving the 18 to 105 at 85 millimeters so it matches the Rokinon and images at f4, 5.6, f8, and f11. That's what we're going to shoot with these two. On the Rokinon we're going to go back to f1.4 and f2.8 as well. Alright a quick little fun fact about this lens is that this is the, the lens mount cap that comes with the Rokinon. It goes on to the Sony, but you really have to fight it to get it off. I don't know why, but here it goes. It really is a snug fit. So, just if that happens to you, know it's normal. I almost forgot, I had one more thing to show you. And that is how the in-body stabilization works with this lens. This is me hand holding one hand with no image stabilization. When I touch the button up here, it'll kick in. Watch it. See, that's with it. Without it, <clears throat> with it. Okay, this is handheld shooting one hand, no image stabilization. This is a heavy lens, keep in mind. I'm going to go turn on the in-body stabilization. This is with the in-body stabilization. I'm literally holding the camera the exact same way. Let's go check out some of these pictures. Alright, let's take a quick look at how these images turned out. We've got red down here, that is the 85mm. We've got green over here, that is the 18-105. to The stars stand for f1.4, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, and the one star comes back around to 11. And on the green over here, it starts at f4, 5.6, 8, and 11. So let's go ahead and start with the f4 and compare them to see uh, how they look. All right, I did have to crop the image because I think my I bumped the, the tripod and it gave me different framing. So I've cropped it so it's more zoomed in. Um, let's I'm going to switch these. So over here we've got the red, and right here is the green. So this is the uh, 85 and this is the 105. These are both at f4. Let's see how these turned out. Alright, now f4 on the 18 to 105 is wide open. Uh, this one over here just looks crazy sharp. I think we can even crank this into 2 to 1 and it still looks incredibly sharp. Let's go check out some other textures up here in the corners. It's not as impressive, but it is more impressive than the 18 to 105. I mean, look at how clear that is in comparison. Let's go check out uh, the base here. 
I mean, the, the 85 takes a phenomenal picture when it's stopped down. All right, let's go ahead and jump up to f5.6. All right, the 85 millimeter is still extremely sharp, but the uh, 18 to 105 has really come back a long ways to the point where it's kind of tough to make a call as to which one is running away with this one but when you start looking at some of the details on this tree here I think the 85 millimeter still wins ah yes here we go this is further this is off center here and look at the bark on this tree it's significantly sharper over here pretty close looks just a teeny bit hazy over here so let's go ahead and jump on to the next one here we have got this is going to be f8 f8 ah you can see that the sun has changed between the two don't know if that was a cloud or if the sun was actually setting so this tree here has sharpened up from the last image in the 18 to 105 and over at the 85 it's still just crazy unbelievably sharp I mean this it's hard to get any sharper than this lens is when you stop it down uh, we're gonna forget f11 who cares nobody shoots f11 anyways so I am going to now compare f8 to f 1.4 okay so this one over here see the one star this is f1.4, four stars, this is f8. This is where this lens kind of disappoints, is when it's absolutely wide open. You see? You see how blurry that is? I mean, look at the background. You've got really harsh fringing. This lens, anything that's behind the focal plane, going to give you a green fringe anything in front of it is going to give you a purple fringe you can see just a tiny bit of purple there Let's see if we've got more purple over here you can see a little bit of the purple I guess it's magenta in the grass but uh, see things like that 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 branch is like blue and it's, it's it's really soft and this is focused correctly it's just it just doesn't do a good job all right let's take f2 point or yeah f2.8 and compare it to f1.4 look at the difference between the two this is it was one click on the aperture dial and it made a f remarkable difference just just take a long hard look at that you can see some of the magenta in the bark here and there is still some of the green <clears throat> in the background but there's not nearly as much of it and we've got a significantly sharper image in every regard now here is just a picture of my trash can it gives you an idea of how the separation works when you're not filling the frame here's that purple fringing again you can see how it's purple and a little bit of green this again was shot wide open and this next picture is kind of the reason that I really want to keep this lens it's because of that separation that it gives there it's got such a the subject just stands out so much and uh, I also did a comparison with the 18 to 105 and this is that one you see how I'm not sure I nailed the focus on this one he was moving around but the difference in just the feel of the picture is there's just something about it that's very appealing now I'm going to show you a couple more pictures that I took out there today all of these are just straight from the camera 
I didn't do any processing on them. They're all raw images. This one was actually shot wide open as well, and I think it actually turned out very sharp. I'm impressed with this. I don't think I stopped this down at all, but we don't know because it doesn't tell us. That's the downside with this lens. This one here is shot at 1.4. Uh, you can see it's not super sharp, but it does all right. And then the next one is shot at f4. So 2.8, f4, and it's getting to be that time of year where I need to start doing yard maintenance again. So this lens performs phenomenally at any aperture but f1.4. Okay, here's f2.8, I believe. So, very sharp in focus. Here's f1.4. It almost completely blows out the entire twig, which is pretty remarkable. But it's just not as sharp. It's fuzzy. Not crazy about it. Here's another one. I believe this one was shot wide open, f1.4. And I think this one was stopped down to it's just 2.8. And you can see this is, this is a very good job. So is this depth of field and image quality worth giving up the conveniences that automatic lenses give you? That's your call to make. Thanks for watching and join me in the next one.